Hey everybody, I'm at the state courthouse in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This morning, I'm supposed to be at in a uh, meeting with community leaders on the south side of Chicago today talking about criminal justice reform, but I had to come here because the Democratic Party is suing me in Pennsylvania. And by the way, tomorrow I'm going to Mineola, Long Island, because they're suing me there too. They're suing me all over the country. They try to keep me off the ballot. Um, unfortunately, in some of these states, we're running into judges who are highly politicized and who are, um, who are very, very sympathetic, let me put it that way, to the DNC. Um, and today, the, uh, the judge was less than sympathetic to our side. Meanwhile. Can I ask you about RFK? Because just moments ago, his running mate said that they were considering endorsing you. Have you considered him for a role in the administration? And what role would that be? Well, we haven't. But I would love that endorsement because I've always liked him. Would you, would you also consider putting him in the administration? Uh, you're asking me a very unusual question. I haven't been asked that question yet. Uh, I like him a lot. I respect him a lot. Uh, I probably would if uh, something like that would happen. All right, guys. So yesterday we talked about RFK Jr.'s running mate, Nicole Shanahan, coming out and signaling that it was likely that RFK could drop out the race and endorse Trump. Now, this is a big deal because it seems as if RFK, most of his support as of right now, is coming from Trump supporters. Now, this was not the case when Biden was in the race. It seems as if when Biden got out of the race, a lot of RFK supporters decided to support Kamala Harris, okay? And this almost perfectly coincides with the increase in support for Kamala Harris and the decrease in support for RFK. The Democrats decided, hey, you know what? We're going to vote for Kamala Harris over RFK. So it now seems as if the rest of RFK's support comes from people who probably would likely either not vote at all or vote Trump. And that creates a very interesting situation because of the idea that the race is tight, okay? And Trump is going to need all the support that he can get. Although Trump has been skyrocketing when it comes to certain polls like Rasmussen reports, whom I'm sure a lot of you guys uh, trust this poll more than most polls. Okay, some of you guys don't like polls at all, but you have to go with some numbers to tell you what's going on. You just can't ignore all the numbers. Okay, but Rasmussen dropped a bombshell poll today showing Trump up 10 points over Kamala Harris. Okay, they showed an initial bounce for Kamala Harris due to the fawning coverage from the mainstream liberal media, no criticism. But as Kamala has started to actually get some criticism uh, and some negative coverage from the media, lo and behold, you're seeing Trump kind of break out, okay? And it's returning back to where the polls were at for the most part when uh, Kamala Harris was not the Democrat Party nominee and then all of a sudden she became the greatest thing ever since sliced bread. Also on top of that, Trump is now the betting odds favorite to win. Now, this is really fascinating because Trump gained in the betting odds during the DNC convention, okay? You are supposed to get a bounce as a Democrat from the DNC convention, but as the DNC carries on, it seems as if the betters, they don't really like what they're hearing, right? From the Democrats at the DNC. You have been very vocal, speaking out against anti-trans legislation, anti-drag legislation. Uh, the Republican presidential nominee has been saying that Kamala Harris and Tim Walz are heavy into transgender, whatever that means. He's also been calling Tim Walz tampon Tim, or his campaign has at least, uh, because he signed a bill that uh, provides period products uh, in school bathrooms, all school bathrooms, boys' bathrooms, girls' bathrooms, unisex. What do you think about that kind of language and how does it affect people in your community? You know, it's exhausting. Um, it's gross. And it, it's not working anymore. And the only reason why it does work at all is because we continue to give it oxygen. It's time for us to cut that off. Fuck you.
My name is Dr. Joey Perella, pronoun she, her, hers. I'm a proud resident of the Garden State. I'm proud to stand with Kamala Harris and Tim Walls because they stand with the LGBTQ community. It's time to turn the page on Trump first. Thank you. In Trump's odds of winning actually have went up significantly uh, since the DNC, okay? So he's up as much as 5%. Uh, over the past, what, week or so. And I am hoping that RFK dropping out, which apparently is something that he's going to do on Friday and endorsing Trump is going to increase his odds. And one of the reasons why I say that is because RFK actually represents the disaffected liberal who understands that, you know what, I may not actually like everything about Trump, but I know that he's what's best for this country if the choice is between Kamala Harris and former president Trump. Okay. He's thinking the way that somebody like Elon Musk is thinking the way that you should be thinking. If you're thinking with your brains and not your emotions, the problem is that we have way too many people in this country, especially men not thinking with their brains. Okay. Now we all know that RFK is jacked. Okay. So his testosterone levels are probably where they need to be. And this is probably the main reason why he's thinking correctly on this issue and I'm at the point, guys, where I think I've basically figured out the problem with men in this country and voting, okay? Because we know that testosterone levels are correlated with how you vote, okay? So the higher testosterone levels, the more likely you are to be a conservative. The lower, the more likely you are to be a liberal. The average testosterone levels in men have fallen significantly over the past 50 to 60 years, mainly correlated with a rise in obesity among men and also the general population uh yeah <laughs> i think we figured out the problem because there's absolutely no reason why a straight man should even consider voting for kamala harris okay and if you are a man voting for kamala harris there has to be something else going on okay either low t okay or you're not straight right i'm just saying there is no real reason from a policy perspective for a straight man with normal testosterone levels to vote for kamala harris okay so i understand where rfk is coming from right and i know that i'm kind of joking about the whole testosterone thing but i'm actually kind of serious right I, I really do believe that this is why you have men lining up to vote for kamala harris there's not any other real explanation, in my opinion, outside of that. And it's a big problem in this country, okay? We have to fix the testosterone issue, okay? And I think that you will have more men thinking clearly, right? Especially about these types of issues involving our country. Because, to be honest, in the ideal world, uh, men should be voting conservative at the same rate that black people vote Democrat, right? Uh, you know, except black people voting Democrat 90%. Makes zero sense whatsoever, right, uh, from a policy perspective. But men voting conservative at a 90% clip, voting Republican at a 90% clip, actually makes sense, okay? That actually makes sense. I'm just saying. So with that being said, that takes me to this interview with Nicole Shanahan, who is RFK's running mate. She went on Fox News after announcing on a podcast that, hey, we're thinking about dropping out and endorsing Trump. Now, I want to react to it because this is very damning, when it comes to the Democrat Party, especially a party that claims that they value democracy. However, they've been very anti-democratic towards RFK since he tried to compete against Joe Biden in the Democrat primary in which they basically systemically pushed him out, right? They basically did not give RFK a fair shot at actually taking on Joe Biden and they're still engaging in lawfare against RFK to try to get him out of the race or to make him a non-factor. So let's react to this. I have to say there's only one party that has obstructed fair an, a fair election for us. And unfortunately, it was the Democratic Party. They've mm -hmm. done everything they can, including creating PACs to prevent us from being able to have ballot access. Yeah, it's interesting because you were saying that you could stay in and run the yeah. risk of Kamala Harris win, or you could walk and you could join forces with Donald Trump. When you say join forces, Nicole, what do you mean specifically? Yeah. 
Well, this idea of a unity party, an idea of us coming around these principles of fighting for liberty in this country, fighting for our children's health. We have the worst chronic health crisis mm -hmm. um, in the world right now. Over 50% of children are diagnosed with some chronic disease. This is unconscionable. Yeah. And we are willing to work with anyone who is sincere in their endeavor to fix and address this issue. Do you believe the Trump campaign and Trump himself is sincere? Do you see a home? You talk about this as being Bobby's decision. Do you see a home for RFK Jr. in the Trump administration, health and human services, something to that extent? I would fully support it. I would fully support um, a strong partnership dedicated to this issue. A lot of you know people comment that in his first term he didn't accomplish many of the things that the that mothers really were hoping mm -hmm. he would do. Um, made some big mistakes around the pandemic. However, I think that he is sincere. Yeah, I do. I think it's interesting because the National Review today kind of agrees with you. It's saying that that if you, in fact, join the Trump camp, I'm not saying the Trump campaign, if you pulled out of the race, that it would be more beneficial to the Trump campaign than the Harris campaign. Is that a fair assessment? I, I think that it's a tight race right now. Yeah. Um, I, I wish that we had had a chance to debate, that we had fair representation in the polls. I wish we had a chance to be on stage because had we, we likely would have won this election. Yeah. You know, 71% of Americans want a strong third party option and we delivered it in terms of ballot access, yeah. um, but they're suing us. The, the DNC right. aligned PACs are suing us to get us off the ballots right now. These are frivolous lawsuits. We've had some of the best people involved in our ballot petitions, yeah. um, some of the most precise you know, signature packages ever submitted to any of the Secretary of States. I, we've over come so much to yeah. get to this point. So to even be contemplating this is, is, is tough. It's a really hard decision and we don't come to this moment lightly. We come to this moment because in every single decision we make, first and foremost, we want to make sure that we are representing the best interests of mm. health and wellness of young yeah. people, children, and future generations. Yeah. I so what you heard there was basically somebody that is completely and totally exhausted with the political machine <laughs> that is the two-party system, okay? That's what you just heard because Democrats have used lawfare just like they did against Trump in order to basically keep them off uh, ballots across the country, okay, which is completely an undemocratic. But again, Democrats tell you, we're the party of democracy, right? Except when there's a threat to our democracy, okay, which tells you everything you need to know about what democracy actually means to them is Democrat power and control, right? If you are a threat to Democrat power and control, you are a threat to their democracy, right? This is what they actually mean. But um, she didn't really answer the question about whether or not, you know, RFK dropping out of race benefits the Democrats or Republicans more, right? Harris or Trump more. I think it's clear at this point, him dropping out of race would definitely be beneficial to Trump, even if it's just marginal, because I really do believe that their polls are showing that, yeah, all of our supporters that were Democrats for the most part have basically left and they went to Kamala. Uh, and then everybody else has left are probably people likely to vote Trump or not vote at all. And this is probably consistent across all of the internal polling. Okay. And the reason why I say that is because I don't think that they would be doing this if this wasn't the case. Also, Democrats have basically told RFK, kick rocks, right? We're not interested at all. But the Trump campaign seems to be very excited about the possibility of RFK dropping out and an endorsement, which again, wouldn't be the case if they had polls internally showing that, well, RFK is hurting Kamala Harris more than hurting Trump at this point. They, I don't think they would be kind of cheering this on and excited about it, but it appears as if they are, in fact, pretty excited about RFK dropping out and endorsing Trump, and they're kind of embracing RFK. The uh, endorsement from RFK, do you think that's coming? Listen, I, I hope so. Uh, you know, I think RFK, I think he's a smart guy. I think he's actually got very good views on certain things. I think there's other things, you know, we're going to disagree with him yeah. on. But I think it, it shows sort of a, a unity against 
literally, you know, you mentioned it uh, before I hopped on about the, the communism that we are up against. It's not hyperbole yeah. anymore. It's not like, oh, they're just a little bit more left than us. It's not, you know, these, these people, you know, she's talking about, we want to set up price fixing and we want to set up this and we're going to be auditing businesses and we're going to take away your business and we're going to take away your children if we you know, can't do, uh, you know, drive through, you know, transgender surgeries for minors without parental consent. Right. It, it, right. It, they've lost their minds. And so, you know, I love the idea. I love the idea of, you know, giving him, you know, some sort of role in some sort of, you know, major, uh, you know, three letter entity or whatever it may be and let them blow it up. Uh, I, I think that's what we need. And so I think that kind of unity even where there may be certain disagreements on certain things, I think he could be a really great asset for that. I think he could bring people together. And I think it shows a strong, uh, you know, a strong opposition to what we are up against, which is just abject insanity. And I think if we had real unity uh, across independents and others in America to stand up for what we know is coming, what the media is doing a very good job hiding uh, from us, which is the reality of the Kamala Harris uh, platform which is just a continuation of the Biden administration's platform. You know, we don't need another four years of this. What's, what's unique with this election, we had four years under Trump. We've had four years under Biden. When were you better off? It's sort of a no-brainer. And yet, you know, when you're up against the trillion-dollar institution of tech, trillion dollars of mainstream media functioning as the marketing arm of the Democrat Party, you know, it, it, it's hard to get a fair shake. And so we have to expose that. And the more people that we had on, on board, uh, the better. So I'd, I'd certainly be open and welcome to the idea, frankly. Yeah, so I think Don Jr. is spot on, right? This is real unity, okay? This is what real unity looks like, okay? Real unity is saying, hey, let's put our differences aside and understand that this Democrat Party is unhinged, okay? These people are far leftist, okay? They've really gotten into socialist, communist territory, and that's just not the direction that we can take this country in, and they must be defeated, right? Therefore, we need to unify, okay? This is real unity, uh, what's not real unity is what you're saying uh, happened at DNC when you have the never Trumpers who are going against their principles and uniting with Democrats to push the socialism uh, and communism on this country, right? That's not real unity. That's just Trump derangement that has gotten so out of control that it has caused cognitive impairment, right? That's what's going on with the never Trumpers, okay? But what you see happening with RFK is him making a calculation that, yeah, Trump is what's best for this country. Uh, there are some things that we can both agree upon that are important issues that I can help the Trump administration with. And I think that's a good thing, right? I think that's a great thing. I might not agree with RFK on everything, okay? But ultimately, at the end of the day, there are some things where, hey, we can get some work done, right? We can push the country in the right direction, and that's all that matters. In fact, I'm super excited about this team that Trump is building, the people that are around Trump now that hopefully will be in his cabinet. I mean, you're talking about potentially RFK, Elon Musk, J.D. Vance, Vivek Ramaswamy, Tulsi Gabbard. I mean, that is real diversity, right? When you talk about diversity, that is actual real diversity, okay? In a good way, in a good way, okay? The people that Trump is surrounding himself with, um, He's building a hell of a team, man. And this is why I'm super excited about a second Trump term because I'm like, yo, he's surrounding himself with people that are future leaders of the movement, okay? There is now some ideological kind of cohesion, right, uh, that is happening. And even though you have these people who aren't necessarily MAGA, okay, like a Tulsi Gabbard or an RFK, um, they still have ideas that in some ways can align with the movement and help push the movement in the right direction in regards to where we need to go. So again, I'm loving what's happening right now. And I'm hoping that RFK dropping out helps Trump, even if it's marginal, uh, it's still a big deal because the race most likely will come down to the margins. So, you know, hey, I think that overall, this is a good thing. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.